There are some weapons in TF2 with specific purposes. There is the Tomislav for example that rewards good tracking for the heavy player. The more accurate the player's aim is, the higher the reward that the user gets. For engineer, there's the gunslinger that has the purpose of enabling NG to switch his whole playstyle from defense to offense. It opens up a more aggressive playstyle by slamming down expendable, quickly building mini sentries. There are two weapons however that no one seems to understand the purpose of. Maybe I am the only one who sees this or maybe I'm in the wrong. Only time will tell. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Anyway, I felt compelled to make a weapon analysis video about it. YouTubers reviewing the two weapons in question all come to the conclusion that they are bad weapons. I fully agree on that. They are worse than their alternatives, which classifies them as bad when comparing weapons. But I have to add that they serve a specific purpose too. They are made for noobs. I don't mean noob as a derogatory term, but as in the official definition. A person who is inexperienced in a particular sphere or activity, especially computing or gaming. Everyone has been there. Being inexperienced at the game is nothing to be ashamed of, although it can be intimidating to fight 7000 hour players who have perfected the playstyle of their main class so that a newer player almost has no chance, unless he gets a random quit. That's where the noob weapons come into play. But first, let's go over their stats. Starting with the Vitasaur for Medic. This weapon deals the normal base damage of 65 on a melee swing. It can random crit for 195. As for the upsides, the weapon collects organs of people you hit, which is disgusting by the way. Each successful hit gets you 15% on your organ meter and it caps out at 60% or 4 hits, which means you can land up to 4 swings to have a full meter. Let's say you have acquired 100% uber charge. Upon death, you retain 60% of that uber charge when you spawn. It is important to know that if you were at 50% uber charge when you died and you landed 4 swings with the Vitasaur in that life, you retain 60% of 50, which is 30. As for the downside, the Vera gets a minus 10 max health penalty. This downside is very minor and in my playtesting it was hardly noticeable. Admittedly, I have never used Vitasaur before. The minus 10 HP at all times should be the downside of the Ubersaur to make this weapon a little, little more balanced. The Ubersaur has the insane upside of getting 25% Ubercharge on melee hit with a laughable downside of a 20% slower firing speed. So the weapon is considered bad because you get the benefits of it only when you die. I won't argue with that, this is 100% accurate. The Ubersaw, for comparison, grants you an immediate effect of a successful melee swing, gaining a quarter of Uber chart on hit. The weapon's bad, case closed. But wait, what if I told you that the Vitasaur actually has its uses? It is, as you may have guessed, designed specifically for newer players. Without proper positioning and a good game sense, you die very easily in this game. You often don't even know what hit you. Newer players, who die anyway, more sooner than later, can benefit from the Vitasaur. The Uber that they have built up in the previous life is not fully gone when they went out with a bang and came swinging at the onslaught of enemies who were all going for the map. The weapon rewards you for dying and trying to take out an enemy as a last ditch effort, knowing it probably won't be enough, but they go for it anyway. You know who does that often? Newer players aka noobs. So should you use this weapon? I don't recommend it considering it is arguably worse than the stock bone saw and that the uber saw exists, which is better in any way. If you are an inexperienced player willing to play medic, then I suggest you go with this weapon for a bit, before committing to the meta, which is crossbow and uber saw. The weapon has its uses, but it seems nobody sees the Vita saw as a weapon made for newer players specifically, so it is unlikely to see the Vita saw being used more than it currently is. The Vitasaur is not a bad weapon, considering the downside is insignificant and it functions basically like stock, only that you can retain Uber on death. 
the fact that it is overshadowed by the Ubersaw makes the Vitasaw a rare occurrence to see on TF2 servers. By the way, the correct way to pronounce Ubercharge would be Übercharge. As a German I can testify to that. It is written in the game with the letter Ü and not U. But seeing that the Uber pronunciation has become established, I will turn a blind eye to that. There is another weapon that has the purpose of being good for the lesser experienced players, and that is the Red Tape Recorder. The Spice Sapper weapon slot has only two options, the Normal Sapper and the Red Tape Recorder. The Normal Sapper is used by the vast majority of players, and for a good reason. The Stock Sapper and the Red Tape Recorder work in the same way in the sense that upon placing them on an engineer's building, the building gets deactivated. The Sapper counts as building themselves, which is important for the Home Wrecker or the Jag. The Stock Sapper deals 25 damage per second to buildings, which it has been applied to. The Red Tape Recorder, on the other hand, does not deal damage. It reverses the building status. A level sentry will just downgrade itself and pack itself up with a red tape recorder applied to it. A level 3 sentry downgrades from level 3 to level 1 in 5 seconds. But the process of unpacking itself from a level 1 to a toolbox takes a whopping 13 seconds. It seems the weapon's primary function is to level down buildings and just destroy them when your teammates happen to make a push and destroy the buildings. You might think its purpose is to be a weapon to be specifically good against the engineer's gunslinger. True, it is good against it. The gunslinger enables the NG to put down mini sentries instead of normal sentries, which build faster and cost only 100 battle. These mini sentries are expendable and always available. A good measure against it is to use the red tape recorder to sap them in a slow and agonizing way. While his stuff is being sapped slowly, the NG is almost defenseless. Take note that he can't use his destruction PDA to destroy his buildings while they are being sapped. The NG is forced to fend for himself, giving you the advantage on medium ranges when it comes to shotgun versus revolver. Although the weapon is good against the gunslinger, I think that it is just a coincidence. It is unlikely that the intended purpose of the red tape recorder was to counter the engineer's gunslinger, since there is no unlockable weapon in TF2 with the purpose of countering another specific unlock. If you can think of one, please tell me in the comments. It becomes apparent that the red tape recorder's only function is to deactivate Angie's buildings and leveling them down, because the downgrade time from level 3 to 1 is fast, but the destruction time from level 1 to 0 is long. This unlock is designed for the inexperienced spy that uses the stock sapper and tries to destroy an NG nest, but inevitably dies trying. After the newbie spy has been swiftly dealt with, all applied stock sappers get whacked off. The buildings get repaired in a swing or two with the wrench. A few seconds after the free to player spy death, it is as if he has never tried to take down the NG nest in the first place. Had the NG used the red tape recorder on the level 3 sentry, dispenser and teleporter, all of the turtle NG's buildings would have been downgraded. Take note that when a sentry gun is at level 2, with the upgrade process of 150 of 200, the application of a red tape recorder at this point immediately negates the 150 metal put in for upgrading the sentry. A level 1 teleporter has a recharge time of 10 full seconds. Many players will know that a level 1 teleporter is almost useless, especially if your scumbag scout teammate takes it, leaving the three heavies standing right out of the spawn door dumbfounded, forcing them to get to the front lines at a snail's speed. It takes 200 metal for the NG to upgrade its buildings for one level, so assuming all of his buildings have been downgraded, level 1 by red tape recorder, this is a huge setback for the NG and his whole team. The weapon is designed to mess with level buildings, so if the noob spy who tries to take out a nest gets killed right after using the red tape recorder on a couple of buildings, he at least did something useful by setting back the NG and nullifying the upgrade process. The other sapper alternative, the stock sapper, would have done close to nothing. 
This is why the Red Tape Recorder is specifically made for newer players. I remember when I was very new at the game and found the Red Tape Recorder as a random drop. I tried it and came to the same conclusion that it at least downgrades all of NG's stuff, so I didn't feel too bad for being taken out by the cross-eyed pyro defending the NG nest. These two weapons are made for noobs. The more experience you get at the game, the less of a use these weapons bring, and vice versa. The red tape recorder still has its occasional use when you really want to annoy some engineer, because the beeping sound the NG gets while his buildings are being zapped is really loud and annoying. It also is a good counter to a mini sentry NG, especially if there are multiple ones of them in your opposing team. The Vita saw, on the other hand, does not really have a niche use. I see it once or twice a year in casual lobbies, but it seems it is only used by people not knowing what the other weapons do and that there are much better alternatives. The best in slot for many loadouts, the Uber saw, is so overpowered that the Vita saw is almost put into obscurity. Tell me what you think in the comments and subscribe for weapon reviews, challenges and gameplay commentary for specific loadouts. Thanks for watching, bye.